Well, this is the last of our three-part series on hobby greenhouse pest control. And if you'll remember this series on pest control, we've tried to associate it with a puzzle, with each segment being a piece of that puzzle. And the first segment was on uh, cultural controls, and that was our first piece of the puzzle. And really those dealt with sanitation practices, weeds, keeping the greenhouse just clean and tidy and, and controlling the optimum conditions. The second part of the puzzle was referred to as mechanical controls, and those dealt with traps, uh, soaps and oils that are mechanical type pesticides, uh, just mechanical type controls. Well then today we're going to talk to you about botanical and biological controls. Now we're first going to tell you a little bit about biological controls, and those are defined as the direct or indirect use of parasites, predators, and pathogens to control insects, or at least keep them to a minimum again where they don't cause severe damage. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about are beneficial insects. And when we talk about beneficial insects, we're talking about insects that are predators or parasites or that compete with other insects. And we'll give you some examples. And some of the studies and researchers and entomologists tell us that really using beneficials in a greenhouse is really the best way to use them that if you go out and you purchase insects and bring them into a greenhouse, you've got a controlled environment where you can keep them contained in that area. Compare that to outdoors, and they're really showing that it's not that beneficial. Now, don't get me wrong. You want to encourage as many beneficial insects in the garden as you can, but investing money and sending them in and trying to release them and keep them in your garden is not always uh, optimum thing and it doesn't always work. As you can well expect, they go to your neighbors and fly off and so you may be throwing money down the drain. But we're going to talk to you about beneficials in the greenhouse. Now there's many different companies and catalogs that you can order beneficials from. The prices vary quite a bit, but we're going to talk to you in reference to some of the common insect pests that are in a greenhouse. And first of all, we want to talk to you about spider mites. We're all familiar with spider mites, the little mites that suck the plant juices out. Well, there is a beneficial uh, insect which is called a predatory mite, or predatory mite, and this is very specific to feeding on the harmful spider mites. And the one that we think of the most is a two-spotted spider mite, which is the bad guy. Now, you might ask, how would you ever tell the difference between a spider mite that's good and one that's bad? Well, the good guys are usually faster moving. They're pear-shaped compared to the bad guys that are slower and more rounder. Uh, the good guys are pale to reddish color. They have longer legs, and the good guys also don't have any spots on them where the two-spotted spider might will. But again, if you're ordering them in, uh, you would want to make sure that the company is reputable so that they would send you the accurate type of predatory mite. Now the thing you need to remember, there are several species of predatory mites, and so you would want to make sure you request ones that are for a greenhouse situation. As a general rule on the predatory mites, they suggest that you use two mites per square feet. Or if you've got a lot of uh, mite problems, you might even put two per plant. And again, these are just some numbers so you would know how many to order. And just to give you an example of what some of these cost, if you order about 500 of the predatory mites, they average about $29. So that gives you an idea of what we're talking about. You're shipping them in, paying money, and releasing them into a greenhouse. Now white flies are another pest, and the white fly parasite, which is the Incarcia, is one that, again, is very easy to get. And let me show you an example here of how those were sent. This is a parasite, so it's sent on this little card here, already parasitized on some of the adult white flies. And that way you just put the card, hang it up in the greenhouse, and then they'll be released and, and hatch out and, and we'll fly over to the others and parasitize them. The recommended number is about one to two per square feet. And again, for 500, they average about $25, depending upon who you order them from. Now, aphids are another common pest in the greenhouse. And our lady beetle or ladybug is really one of the best uh, predators to feed on the aphids. They tell us that an adult aphid can feed on about 40, um, or excuse me, an adult lady beetle can feed on about 40 aphids in an hour. And the good thing is the larval stage also feeds on aphids. 
Again, it's about one per square feet. Uh, half a pint cost about $12. Now the last one is mealybugs, and there's a mealybug destroyer that is the good guy, also referred to as Australian lady beetle. Anywhere from 100 to 200 per square feet is a release rate, but these are the most expensive one, about $65 to order 100 of these. And they're sometimes confused with the larval stage of the mealybug. But the one that you really need to remember is the green lacewing. It's really considered the all-purpose beneficial insect that feeds on aphids, mealybugs, scales, and white flies. The larval stage is the one that feeds on them and that lasts about one to three weeks, about a thousand per 500 square feet, and about a thousand of the green lace wings cost you about $10, so they're really pretty cost effective too. Now I need to give you a few guidelines when using these. You need to make sure you properly identify and monitor the pest so you know what's going on. You don't want to wait to the last minute till you've got a high infestation of the bad guys or you'll be in trouble. You might want to purchase a hand lens. These are very reasonable uh, to help you in identifying some of these stages. If you're using beneficials, you've got to rely on very little insecticides because if you have residuals, you'll actually kill your beneficials. And proper timing is important and you might have to do multiple releases. And keep in mind that you're going to lose a few just because of the mechanical controls in a greenhouse. It might suck them out, the fans, uh, you might lose a few that way. Now the second part of biological we want to talk about are biocontrol agents. And you've heard us talk about BT and some of those products. Well, there are several different species and they really aren't going to control any of the insects that are very common in a greenhouse, but they're made out of pathogens such as bacteria and that's why they're considered biological controls. We've also got botanicals over here which are made from plant materials such as sabadilla and nicotine sulfate, pyrethrins, those type of things. And the thing that you need to remember, these are many times considered organic and biological controls because of their short persistence in the environment. But you don't want to get sloppy when using these because some of them are still going to be more toxic at the time of application. So be sure and wear the protective equipment, read the label, know what's going on, and you may have to spot treat in a greenhouse situation. But if you'd like to um, remember the, the puzzle that we're talking about, again, just as a review, we're talking about cultural, mechanical, biological controls. And they're all part of integrated pest management, which is just incorporating all the pieces of the puzzle. Now, to give you some more information, there are a couple of fact sheets that I want to show you. One here on uh, biological or beneficial insects, and it gives you some pictures. And again, you can pick that up at your county extension office. And then there's also one on hobby greenhouses. So these will give you a little bit more backup information. But the main thing is we're wanting to have you cut down on pesticides and use all the practices that we've discussed and hope that these will help you in your hobby greenhouse endeavors. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.